Namaskar, warm greetings from DelNet Developing Library Network, New Delhi, India. Most distinguished and esteemed speaker, Dr. Esther Omela Clara Claperolos, Head Territorial Planning and Quality Library Services at Diputacia de Barcelona, Spain, and also the member of IFLA section on public libraries, Shri K. Jay Kumar, President DelNet, Dr. S.S. Murthy, Vice President DelNet, Dr. P. R. Goswami, Treasurer, professional colleagues from the wonderful country of Spain, heads of institutions, including the directors, principals, deans, HODs, librarians, and LIS professionals, educational administrators, public library administrators, policy makers, officials, faculty, researchers, scholars, and my colleagues at Delhi here at New Delhi, and also its coordination units at Bangalore, Hyderabad, and Pune, ladies and gentlemen. I, Dr. Sagita Kaul, Director Delnet New Delhi, on behalf of the organizer that is Delnet, extends a very warm hearty welcome to all of you for joining us today from different parts of India and also many other countries across the globe, including Bhutan, Malaysia, Nigeria, Qatar, Sri Lanka and UAE to Delnet annual lecture on navigating challenges, public libraries and the new manifesto toolkit for professionals, which will shortly be delivered by a distinguished speaker, Dr. Esther Omela, Club Parallels, Head Territorial Planning and Quality Library Services at Diputacia de Barcelona, Spain, and also the distinguished member of the section on public libraries of IPLA. We are much grateful to each one of you for your overwhelming response as nearly 1,000 participants have registered for this program today. At the very outset, on behalf of Delnet, we would like to express a very sincere gratitude and thanks to our esteemed speaker, Dr. Esther Omela, for sparing her very valuable time to be there with us this evening and to share her vast expertise and knowledge with us on this platform. Delnet, the most vibrant library network, which has now emerged as a single largest network in South Asia, connecting more than 8,500 institutions, has been organizing the annual lectures since 1998, and it was delivered in the past by the outstanding luminaries, including Professor M. G. K. Manan, Dr. B. S. Arunachala, Dr. R. Natarajan, Dr. N. Shishagiri, the global experts, including Dr. Stephen Abraham and Mr. Brent May, the president of Special Libraries Association, Mr. Brian Gambles, the Executive Director, Library of Birmingham in UK, Dr. Heather Brown from Arts Lab Australia, Mrs. Anjana Bhatt, Florida Gulf Coast University, Florida, Dr. Camilla Eller, the former President of American Library Association, Professor Bohyun Kane, the CTO from University of Rhode Island Libraries in USA, Mrs. Trish Hamford of Alaya in uh, Australia, Mr. Peter Bay from Princeton University Library, USA. It's a profound honor and pleasure for us to have our distinguished speaker and the global public library expert, Dr. Esther Omela Claire who has been very, very kind and gracious in, in accepting our invite to deliver the Delnet annual lecture. We extend a very hearty welcome to you, Dr. Esther, and it's indeed a profound pleasure that you have acceded to our request to deliver the Delnet annual lecture. Indeed, indeed, a very heartening welcome to you from entire fraternity from India and a very, very special warm welcome to you. And uh, you have been very kind and gracious in accepting our invite. And it's such a profound honor that you have been there with us this evening. Thank you very much, Dr. Esther. Thank you. Thank you so much indeed. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Thank you so much to uh, Delnet for the invitation. Thank you so much. It's a big, big honor to be with you uh, this afternoon. Saika, thank you. Namaste. May I have? Yeah, thank you so much. And I would like to take a minute of yours because I would like to, you know, introduce you to our very distinguished colleagues here, to your distinguished self. And uh, I'm very much proud and honored to inform you all that Dr. Esther Omela is the head of the Territorial Planning and Quality Library Services at Diputacia de Barcelona in Spain. And she's also, as I said earlier, the member of IFPLA section on public libraries. She's currently responsible for the design and execution of the library and mobile library plan and its financing programs as well as the implementation of the institutional library model recently empowered by UNESCO based on innovation and services and focusing on a library focused on people on the co-creation and generation of knowledge and on community work for the transformation of the environment and societies. 
with the areas of responsibilities, the support for all processes of adaptation and creation of libraries, of the network of libraries and mobile libraries stands out from the empowerment of the professionals. Uh, Dr. Omena has been coordinating the multidisciplinary team. She promotes territorial library planning in the municipalities and promotes the development of municipal plans for libraries. She is also responsible for the implementation of quality instruments in the service and evaluation of library services with special attention to the economic perspectives and development of instruments and services for continuous improvement, studies of social value, economic and of impact to position the services and favor the transversal work of library and work in a quadruple helix. She has been teaching and research experience at the University of Barcelona as an associate professor. Furthermore, she is also currently a professor at UNED as a prolific author. Her body of works involves numerous studies, publications and articles in professional literature with a recent focus on leveraging public libraries to address issues of loneliness and social isolation. In 2021, Dr. Esther has been a distinguished representative of her institution on the global stage as an IFLA UNESCO, serving as one of the 15 international members on the Standing Committee of the Public Library Section. Dr. Esther has contributed to shaping the the future of the public libraries globally. In 2021, Dr. Omela has was also appointed as a member of the commission responsible for implementing the manifesto, showcasing her dedication to advancing uh, the principles of library services. In 2023, her significant contributions extended to collaborating on the toolkit for the international implementation of the manifesto, an effort officially endorsed by UNESCO. Her advisory role for the national and the regional governments underscores her expertise in the field with recent participation in the social value studies of libraries in Brazil, standing out as a testament to her global impact. It is an, indeed a great honor and pleasure to have you with us today, Dr. Esther Miller, and thank you so very much once again for your very kind, gracious acceptance to deliver the Delnet Annual Lecture. Well, before I pass on the baton, you know, we would just quickly would like to have, as being advised by Dr. Esther Omela, we would like to have a very quick question to each one of our attendees over here requesting you, please kindly give us your candid, you know, opinion about it. And then I would be really delighted, you know, to pass on the baton to Dr. Esther Omela to start the proceedings. And we are, here comes the question, which is getting flashed on your screens right now. Have you ever heard about IFLA UNESCO Public Library Manifesto. We request to you all, please kindly come forward and give us your feedback that have you ever heard about IFLA UNESCO Public Library Manifesto or is it for the first time that you have been hearing this uh, as uh, uh, the session is going to be all concentrated on that and Dr. Omela has uh, felt it necessary that uh, to, you know, to ascertain that how many of our attendees today have been knowing about IFLA UNESCO Public Library Manifesto. We could see that 41% of you have voted as of now, requesting you, please do come forward and at least uh, cross at least 50 or 60% of our attendees must really participate in the survey in order to get, uh, you know, so that we, we can ascertain, you know, the correct kind of, uh, you know, opinion uh, from the floor. Uh, requesting you all. Thank you very much. We have crossed 50% and let me divulge the findings to Dr. Esther. And this is for you, uh, Dr. Esther, 73% of the attendees have opted for yes. 73% of them have, uh, you know, have a point that yes, they have been knowing about, but yes, they would like to really explore and you are really going to add, you know, largely, you know, to their existing knowledge and uh, and it's, it's indeed so wonderful to uh, see that and as I could see now at this moment now, it is a ratio of 73 to 27%. So 73% who have gone for the option yes, and remaining 23 have uh, said that yes, uh, you know, 27% have said that no, they have not been knowing about it. Indeed an honor and a pleasure now in requesting uh, uh, Dr. Mela to kindly start the proceedings. And once again, thank you very much for acceding to our request and it's indeed an outstanding pleasure and honor for us to have you with us here today. Thank you very much. And I, I request you now to start the deliberations. It's, it's over to you, Dr. Mela. 
Thank you very much, Dr. Sangeeta. Uh, thanks to Delnet. As I told, it, it is a big honor to be with you today. Saikal, uh, namaste. I have Indian heart. Uh, after the presentation, I will explain why India is in my heart. But first, let me start. Uh, I will give a presentation talking about four items. I will definitely talk about my institution, Diputación de Barcelona, which is the regional government uh, in Barcelona region, and we are holding library service for all the municipalities. Afterwards, I will talk about the new IFLA UNESCO Public Library Manifesto, which was published um, one year and a half ago. And of course, on, I will link the um, library model that we are uh, operating in Barcelona region with the new manifesto as an example. We will, we will be able to see a, a video um, about our libraries, so I will invite you to a trip to our uh, libraries in Barcelona today. And afterwards, I'm very happy to share with you the toolbox and reference about Manifesto that you uh, have available um, for our library uh, advocacy. Where, where do I come from? Uh, I come from Barcelona province. Uh, Barcelona province, as you can see, we are dealing with nearly 6 million of inhabitants in, in Barcelona province. The main capital, the capital is Barcelona, and uh, Catalonia is our country with nearly 8 million of inhabitants. Uh, and of course, we are in South Europe, Spain, in Spain, nearly 50, 50 million uh, inhabitants. Um, our regional government is dealing with library service. We help municipalities to deliver the library services. We help in the construction, developing of library services, and also we give services networking. So uh, libraries can work networking, and we are dealing with a, a network of 234 municipal public libraries at that moment. And we are very proud uh, to share with you that we have 12 mobile libraries for the smallest municipality that we reach uh, by mobile. We are an example of networking. We work networking and public libraries in our reality are the most used uh, equipments in our region. So you can see that uh, nearly 40% uh, of uh, the inhabitants are using library services. Uh, you, you can see the dates here. We are very proud to say that we have, um, this year, we have reached uh, better uh, results than before COVID. Uh, so we are very proud to say that uh, we receive uh, 16.7 million visitors per year with a very amount, a very high amount of, of loans and activities for families. Uh, we organize nearly 4,000 uh, activities uh, in the library. So it means 163 activities per library per year. So we are very proud to say that our libraries are very much used for the community. Uh, second, I would like to uh, point about public uh, library, UNESCO Public Library Manifesto. I'm very happy to hear that uh, a lot of you have heard about Manifesto. Uh, as you know, um, the, the IFLA Public Library section has updated the manifesto one year and a half from now. It has been approved by UNESCO, and we are very proud to say that it's a very strong tool for libraries uh, advocacy, and also it's a tool for uh, uh, to establish the strategy of public libraries. And um, to answer the question, why was it necessary to update the manifesto? I'm proud to say 
that uh, there are three uh, main items that uh, make it necessary to update the manifesto. Uh, of course, the changes in both service provision and uh, the, the public policy that I will explain uh, later on. Also that we are dealing with uh, a more active and participatory citizenship uh, all over the time, and also due to uh, sociological changes that made necessary to update the manifesto. And uh, for example, I take as an example the items that our institution um, a strategic plan uh, takes in account that uh, makes all public services to take in consideration for our planification. For example, it takes uh, a huge importance the social inclusion and respect for the environment, as you can see. Also, in our case, uh, we have population that is aging. It means that public, uh, public, and other uh, public serv uh, public library, another public library service will need to deal with services for an aging population. Also, we need to, uh, we have the challenge of the digital inclusion and also very important, we need to consider the cultural, functional and gender uh, diversity. For all those sociological change, it was necessary to update the manifesto. And very important, I was engaged in the uh, renewal of the manifesto and we took in account that we wanted to consider the utility of public library. The manifesto highlights the utility of public library. I mean, we, we, we say that uh, public library needs to be useful for citizens, otherwise we are not uh, uh, a service. And uh, to give you an example, it is very important for us librarians to talk on uh, social value of public library. For us, it is very important and we are updating time to time uh, the, our study in social value for librarians to be able to express uh, which is this social value of public libraries. Here you can upload uh, our latest uh, study on social value. Which library reflects the manifesto? As you can see, the new manifesto looks after a library which is involved in the acknowledged society. And it means that libraries should uh, not only uh, um, look after accessing of uh, information, but also producing, creating and sharing acknowledge. Uh, the, the new library in the new manifesto is a library that is able to produce, to create with users and uh, make it happen so that users can change, acknowledge with, uh, with the community. And the manifesto is reflecting a library with sustainable uh, development. This is very important in the new uh, manifesto. I'm very happy to let you know that I have included in this presentation the main changes of the new manifesto regarding the one we had in 1994. This information, to, uh, together with other very useful information, it's available for you in IFLA Public Library section website uh, that afterwards you will be able to have the address and of course I'm inviting you to consult this information of the uh, main changes of the new manifesto regarding uh, the other one, the old one. Here as well, excuse me, here as well you can um, check the changes of the new manifesto for give you uh, for give you a, a, an idea, the, the latest manifesto was considering a library uh, that was able to uh, awareness of scientific achievement. The new library, the library that is included in the new manifesto is a library that um, is able 
to uh, work on scientific progress with the participation of users and their community, and together with the scientific knowledge, research, and, and health professional, that with the participation of the library users can uh, participate in scientific progress. We have many examples in, in Barcelona region of users participating in uh, what we call uh, Ciencia Ciudadana uh, citizens uh, science because they are uh, participating as, as uh, users. Of course, I leave uh, this information for all of you. You will be able to consult all the changes or, or this uh, library in the new manifesto. And um, I'm very pleased to make a link with the library model that we are, uh, uh, we are working in Barcelona region. This library that you can see is a new library that uh, was opened last year. It's specialized in music. I know that uh, Sangeta is music and especially for her, for Dr. Sangeta, uh, I'm pleased to uh, um, include this uh, image of a, a library very uh, specialized in music because it's in a city that um, it's all music. I mean, they are, uh, there are a lot of music festivals and the library, it's uh, all music uh, by itself. This is the, the model that, uh, the library model that we are um, um, planning and we are developing in, in our library network in Barcelona region. We want to offer the users a trip to the four uh, different items. We like uh, to offer them the possibility to discover in the library, to learn in the library, to create in the library, and to share with the community as community center and uh, meeting space. For us, it is very important uh, to work on the experience, uh, to empower the users, to um, offer the participation of users on library service, uh, to offer a space for creation, a space for uh, innovation, a space for uh, inspiration. Uh, we think that um, the, mm, our society, which is very, all is very fast and uh, that uh, the citizens normally don't have time to, to reflect, to, to consult, to be informed. Public libraries are very much the space that offer uh, this uh, critical thinking, this meeting space with the community, and this space for inspiration and, and to create uh, a knowledge. Uh, I'm very pleased also to share with you the 12 trends uh, shaping the, the future of, of libraries. You can, you have it uh, available for you. Um, following the manifesto, we have uh, all the, we have um, organized those 12 trends uh, that are shaping the future of public libraries. And we have uh, worked with all our uh, the professionals of our network in order that they can uh, let us know which are the priorities uh, for public library following the their experience that they are working uh, every day with the community and all of those 12 trends are really um, very important uh, for us as um, they are shaping the future of libraries. But uh, those four that you can see in, in a red color are the ones that our professional consider that are the most important uh, shaping the future of public libraries. Those trendings that they are uh, outlining are uh, media and information literacy, also community health, uh, considering that libraries, they have a space in community health, 
also very important reading habits and reading comprehension libraries uh, together with uh, school libraries and schools we have a strong feel and a strong challenge on uh, um, making reading habits uh, higher and reading comprehension of our uh, child, of our youth, of our society uh, higher. And of course, sustainability is another challenge. And we are very proud to say that public libraries uh, need to be an example to society of uh, sustainability. sustainability. And at that moment, uh, please, I ask uh, Dr. Sangeta to uh, put the video so all the uh, all can see an example of uh, which is a translation of those trends and our library model in Barcelona region. Thanks. Thanks sure. very much. Yeah, yeah. surely. Surely. Penso que a la societat actual les biblioteques tenen un espai gairebé màgic perquè ara tenim l'accés al saber en una petita maquineta que és el nostre mòbil, la nostra pantalla d'ordinador i que ens pensem que això ens connecta amb tot el món i per una part sí que és certa, però després n'hi ha una altra que és aquella de sortir del teu espai, anar a un altre espai, un espai comú on el saber, on tota l'adquisició de tot el saber de, de, de totes les civilitzacions humanes hi està recollit i aquest sortir del teu cau per anar a aquest centre comú on pots tenir accés d'una altra manera, amb un altre temps, amb un recolliment que segurament no tens a la xarxa de casa teva, doncs ho trobo essencial i trobo que té molt de futur. Si sí, tradicionalment una biblioteca és un espai d'estudi, de silenci, de contenidor de llibres, doncs eh, els últims anys s'ha convertit més en un espai de socialització, d'enriquiment, de creació de continguts, no, no només de rebre, sinó d'intercanvi als clubs de lectura, i no només als clubs de lectura pròpiament, sinó tots aquells clubs entorn al món de la cultura. Ho fa una labor molt important la biblioteca de, de desenvolupament de, de l'entorn en el que està. No? Ara ja doncs, està tot superinformatitzat, fins i tot pues, un sol servis que ens ajuda a tots i, i que fa bueno, pues que que tot aquest temps que estàvem dedicant a aquest tipus de coses més purament mecàniques ens podem dedicar tots a, a, a coses de, de creació de valors. La xarxa de biblioteques municipals de la demarcació de Barcelona té al voltant de 250 equipaments entre biblioteques i bibliobusos. És un conjunt d'equipaments que treballa en xarxa per tant, són equipaments municipals, però des d'una perspectiva d'economia i d'escala treballem coordinadament. Els usuaris això ho veuen en serveis doncs, com el catàleg col·lectiu, que des d'una biblioteca es pot demanar qualsevol llibre de la xarxa, ho veuen perquè tenen un carnet únic, amb aquest carnet poden anar també a qualsevol biblioteca o bibliobús de la xarxa, ho veuen amb el servei de préstec interbibliotecari, que són els llibres els que els mouen i no les persones de biblioteca en biblioteca. Per tant, el que s'ofereix és un servei integral. I el que portem és un equilibri territorial i una equitat del servei. Qualsevol ciutadà que visqui a la demarcació de Barcelona i que accedeixi a una biblioteca o un bibliobús té els mateixos serveis bàsics. Per tant, tenim la garantia de l'equitat en la prestació del servei. Són biblioteques que permeten que els ciutadans descobreixin nou coneixement, noves matèries, nous interessos, aprenguin aprenguin fent, aprenguin participant, ja sigui d'activitats lúdiques o d'activitats pròpiament d'aprenentatge, idiomes, aprenguin a viatjar, aprenguin a estimar el seu entorn, aprenguin a conèixer-lo. Per tant, són unes biblioteques que ajuden a descobrir, a crear, a aprendre i a compartir. La biblioteca jo penso que ha fet uns canvis molt grossos, sobretot com la teníem entès al principi, a nivell d'espais, i la idea una mica de la Biblio és això, aquests espais que la gent pugui fer-ne uns usos diferents dels quals es feien fins ara. No? I l'exemple més clar doncs, és l'Epiteca, no? que és un repte de, que ens van plantejar de fer apicultura urbana, 
però utilitzant espais, per exemple, que fins ara eren espais buits o espais, per dir-ho d'alguna manera, morts. No? Tot això són, són coses que fins ara no ens les havíem plantejades mai i per nosaltres són reptes i canvis molt grans. Antigament enteníem les biblioteques com un reservori. Si ens dediquem només a fer això, jo penso que les biblioteques se n'aniran a Norris. No? És precisament replantejar-ho tot, vull dir, que, que la gent participi en, en com vol fer ús dels equipaments públics, de les biblioteques, què espera la gent de manera activa de les biblioteques, què venim a fer, eh, i aleshores d'aquí ha nascut una mica el projecte de l'Epiteca. No? Les biblioteques ja fa dècades que s'estan transformant i aquest moviment va començar especialment amb la introducció de les noves tecnologies en el que el paper de depòsit de llibres en format paper s'acaba no sent el focus principal sinó que s'introdueixen nous formats i amb aquesta introducció s'introdueix també nous interessos de part de la ciutadania. Ara els processos són més participatius. La biblioteca no proposa, sinó que fa de mediadora entre els interessos de la ciutadania i el que pot oferir la biblioteca. Són els ciutadans els que demanen, els que ens diuen quan ens comuniquen què volen fer, què, quins interessos tenen, i llavors nosaltres intentem eh, complir aquests, aquests desitjos. No? El paper de la biblioteca és clau especialment durant la infància, perquè els, els nens i nenes surten de l'àmbit familiar i de l'àmbit educatiu i venen a un lloc on es troba tot tipus de gent, diferents procedències, de diferents edats... És a dir, entren en un àgora en el que han de saber eh, conviure amb altres persones, amb altres ciutadans. I llavors, clar, jo crec que és un, un àmbit que no tenen explorat i que nosaltres fem aquesta part d'introducció. Zona Game és l'activitat que fem setmanalment a la biblioteca, Forma part dels Bibliolabs de la Diputació de Barcelona i el que fem aquí al Zona Gaming és jugar a videojocs, però no només això, sinó que a més a més també fem activitats relacionades amb el món dels videojocs. La biblioteca transforma el seu entorn aportant doncs, el seu fons bibliogràfic, el personal especialitzat que pot acompanyar a l'educació no formal i formal al llarg de la vida dels usuaris i també a través de les activitats, els tallers, els laboratoris de participació eh, que duem a terme a la biblioteca. És cert que el consum cultural està canviant, però cada vegada més busquem llocs on fer comunitat, on trobar-nos amb altres persones que tenen els mateixos gustos que nosaltres, que llegeixen el mateix que nosaltres. I la biblioteca és un pol d'atracció per crear aquesta comunitat i sentir-nos partícips d'aquesta comunitat on vivim. Les biblioteques públiques per les nostres comunitats eh, som un lloc de trobada, un lloc molt agradable, un lloc saludable, obert a tothom, a un professor universitari i a una senyora que està aprenent català o anglès. Les nostres activitats s'adrecen a, a tothom, però jo vull destacar aquelles activitats que s'adrecen sobretot a les classes amb menys recursos. Per exemple, a les biblioteques qualsevol persona pot venir a gaudir d'una bona exposició, d'una bona obra de teatre, d'una bona lectura en comú amb els clubs de lectura. Qualsevol persona que vingui a una biblioteca eh, acaba trobant el que necessita, tant si és una necessitat informativa, d'oci, com cultural o de relació, d'aprenentatge, vull dir que per això estem. Doncs que vingui el Bibliobús al poble és una oportunitat per tots en general, sobretot pels infants que el tenen aquí just sortir de l'escola amb una ubicació perfecta. Aquí hi ha recursos per tots, des de això, els més petits fins als més grans, els adults, i és una oportunitat perquè és un lloc on troben això, diferents lectures, diferents recursos, que d'una altra manera doncs, seria molt difícil que ells s'hi poguessin apropar. Doncs des del Bibliobús eh, s'organitzen diferents activitats per tot tipus de públic, des de públic infantil, públic familiar, públic adult, en funció una miqueta dels diferents agents territorials que tenim a, a cada un dels municipis. La proximitat del servei és una de les coses que més valoren els usuaris. 
El fet de tenir accés a aquests recursos que els ofereix la Bibliobús, siguin llibres, revistes o fins i tot les diferents activitats que organitzem. El fet de poder-ho gaudir directament al seu propi municipi, no haver-se de desplaçar, és una de les coses que més valoren els usuaris. En el segle XXI, les biblioteques estan en un context que tenen l'oportunitat de ser custòdies del coneixement, a assegurar-se que aquest coneixement es traspassa a la societat. Com? Fent que els llibres, fent que els documents cobrin vida a través de les activitats o generant els propis continguts per la gent que li ve, perquè al final una biblioteca és qui millor coneixement té del territori. Les sinergies entre les biblioteques i la resta d'equipaments és absoluta i pot ser tan àmplia com es vulgui. Si tu tens un teatre que fa una programació cultural determinada, la biblioteca li pot donar recolzament a través de xerrades o a través de divulgació i d'explicació de l'obra que es fa en el teatre. I aquest només és un exemple. Això ho pots aplicar a la programació de teatre, a la programació de música o fins i tot prestant atenció a què és el que fan a les escoles, a quines matèries s'estan impartint. Hi ha tantes sinergies com es vulguin trobar. Doncs jo a la gent que no ve a la biblioteca perquè no sap què oferim o que pensa que no li podem oferir res de nou, li diria que vingués i que provés, que vingués, que preguntés, que mirés i que segur, segur, segur que troba alguna cosa que li convenç. Penso que les biblioteques estan evolucionant moltíssim per un motiu. Jo cada vegada en tinc més informació, cada vegada veig més activitats que em venen de gust de seguir, això dels clubs de lectura ho trobo un encert absolut perquè, a més a més, les biblioteques es converteixen en espai de trobada, que això trobada, aquesta paraula, en el món en què vivim per mi és essencial. Per tant, també té aquest punt de connexió amb arreplegar-nos tots a l'entorn d'una cultura, d'una idea, d'una llengua, d'una literatura, d'un saber. Thank you. Thank you. I uh, hope you liked this, this video presentation. You have heard uh, our librarians, uh, politicians, writers, and library managers talking about uh, this public library model um, that we, 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 we are proud to say that it's uh, oriented um, on users, that users are in, in, in the center of the library, and also acknowledge library are not only uh, um, facilitating the access to acknowledge, but acknowledge it's created in, in the library, uh, in, in, com in community, yeah, for, with the users, uh, and also community. Okay, uh, we are 10 minutes to, to finish. We have talked about uh, manifesto. We have talked until now uh, why it was necessary to update the manifesto. I have explained you the main changes uh, regarding the, the, the other manifesto uh, and also our library model that we are implementing in Barcelona region. And now we are arriving to the uh, last uh, point, I should uh, share again the screen, maybe. Um, yes. It is visible, Dr. Esther. It's very much visible. Ah, okay. okay. You, you can yeah. see my screen? Yes, very much, very much, yes. Okay. But uh, can you see my screen, the presentation? Yes, 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 yes. Very Perfect. much. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Then I have, uh, yes, let's say, uh, six, seven minutes uh, to end. I would like very much to talk on the uh, manifesto implementation. Uh, I have talked about manifesto and now let me uh, explain you which tools do you have as professionals uh, for the implementation of a manifesto. Uh, since it was approved uh, 2022, 
we have organized in, in all different countries the manifesto presentation. Here you can see the example of the presentation in, in Barcelona, which took place in November 22. Um, at that time, we organized a roundtable on cultural rights to present the, uh, the new manifesto. And uh, I'm very proud to say that Barcelona will host um, a Congress in October, on 7th of October, on uh, public library and cultural rights that uh, you will be able to follow uh, in streaming. Of course, you are welcome if you'd like to come, but uh, don't worry, you will be able also to follow it in streaming. And uh, what else we have done? Um, we have organized different workshops with uh, professionals to uh, link manifesto and the uh, priority that, and the challenge uh, that we identify in public library service. This workshop would be very interesting uh, to organize here in India because our idea is that um, we, we organized uh, those challenges regarding the uh, sociological situation of the region, of the country, and we link um, manifesto and uh, the challenge for public library. You can scan all the documentation and all the information. It's available on the IFLA web website. Let me, um, very short, talk about our vision of the members of public uh, library section in IFLA. We have the idea that the manifesto implementation is a shared responsibility uh, of everyone. Uh, as we as member of uh, UNESCO, we need to offer you the, the materials, the, the toolkit. I'm very happy to say that all those materials are now available on, on the website, as you will be able to see. We need to work with politicians, leader, leaders to link uh, public libraries and the promotion of cultural rights. Uh, as uh, I was explaining, we are organizing this Congress in October. And as, as library professionals, we are responsible to implement the manifesto in our uh, institutions, in the municipalities, uh, whatever, uh, using the toolkit that uh, we have available. And when we present the manifesto, uh, I always I ask for an effective collaboration uh, among uh, administrations and institutions for the public library support. And arriving to an end, uh, I have prepared it especially for you. These are all the um, resources that you will be able to find in the public library um, sections uh, website of, of IFLA. And of course, uh, we are very happy to uh, make them available for you. To, to use them for, for your library's advocacy. Uh, just to outline that uh, we have uh, created um, a manifesto version in easy language. So it's very uh, recommendable to, to, to use it and to diffuse it. Also, as you can see, um, you are able to, to consult the changes of, uh, of the new manifesto to hear the voice of the people responsible of uh, on the manifesto uh, updating, as for example, uh, Xiang Hong Hu from UNESCO, who is one of the persons very much engaged on uh, on this uh, new manifesto, uh, and of course you will be able to find the examples of the presentations in different countries, like uh, the one we have organized in Barcelona and the work that we have organized with uh, professionals for um, a link the manifesto and, and the challenge. At least I wanted to uh, point it, this document is very much useful. Uh, it's a template 
uh, that we have uh, created in, in here in Barcelona in English for all the countries. Uh, the idea is that it's able for a local adaptation and of course you can use it to share uh, the, the, the main ideas of the manifesto and the resources uh, to be used for your professionals. And I'm arriving to an end. I will be very pleased to hear uh, your questions. And uh, Dania Van, thanks very much. Thank you very much. It has been a really, really, really honor uh, to be with you this afternoon. Thank you very much, Dr. Esther, Dhanivad, and uh, indeed, indeed, much grateful and obliged with your presence. And thank you so much for taking our time and letting each one of us um, <clears throat> make more aware about uh, not only about the UNESCO IFLA manifesto, but also most importantly, also about the kind of uh, enormous work which has been carried out in the Spanish public libraries and also making us uh, the centers, not only as you have rightly pointed it out that in the public libraries and also in libraries at large, you have to see the avenues, not only just simply as a consumer of information, but also to ensure that we are in a, uh, they become the epicenters for sharing that knowledge to also become the producers of knowledge. And uh, and uh, you are leading the way, you know, you are, you have made everyone feel so proud of the work that you are undertaking. And especially in the, uh, in the various municipalities, it's really something uh, uh, commandable. And we really look forward as I indicated earlier, that Delnet does have planned to hold an international conference on public libraries next year in 2025. And it would be immense pleasure to meet you in person. We met at IFLA, you know, a few months yeah. ago at Rotterdam and uh, many years ago, you know, earlier too. And well before I, uh, uh, you know, I uh, now uh, make the floor open for questions, I would just like to know any kind of workshops, though you have indicated uh, in your presentation uh, that you may like to uh, conduct some of these workshops in India, but uh, uh, whether, if, because uh, as we know, even if plus uh, regional Asia or Shana region, we have never come across any of the workshops being conducted uh, for the public library sector in this particular region of the world. So uh, Dr. Esther, one thing that we would be really glad enough as we are holding this uh, public international public libraries conference, we would definitely be uh, glad enough to, uh, to conduct a very special session to see into it that how Indian libraries, Indian public libraries can embrace and can bring in that change, you know, in the way uh, that uh, we are conceptualizing, we are envisioning our public libraries. So mm -hmm. we would be seeking your support for it, Dr. Esther. Mm -hmm. and, A pleasure. Uh, thank you very much. For any, uh, I, I would just like to uh, ask you for our public uh, librarians and public libraries out of your own experience uh, in Spain, how many public libraries do we have in this entire uh, region of Spain and the Catalonian region, uh, though the country in comparison to India, because the what is the magnitude and what is your revenue generation? How is it a, entirely a government funded or are there also some, uh, you know, the public private partnerships happening in public libraries? Because the funding remains as one of the major issue for sustainability. Uh, so how, mm -hmm. uh, uh, what are the kind of, uh, you know, uh, uh, the kind of work that is being carried out in the Spanish libraries? Yes, um, I will try to, to answer the, the first question. It, indeed, we are very small compared to, to India. Uh, Spain has uh, five set of 50,000 inhabitants and Catalonia, which is uh, my country, has uh, nearly eight million. So it's, it's uh, very small compared to, to your reality. In Barcelona region, so, uh, we are working for nearly six million inhabitants uh, in 311 municipalities. Our reality is that we have a lot of municipalities, which is very difficult to manage. Uh, but it's, this is our reality. And uh, we have uh, a network of nearly, let's say, 240 uh, libraries in, in, in our region, but in the whole municipalities. For us, it is very important that 
not every municipality, we are also dealing with a small municipalities of uh, under 3,000 inhabitants, and not everyone is able to have a library. That's why we are offering mobile library services, which are very well accepted. And um, in fact, they, they get all the resources of the whole network because uh, a mobile library can hold, let's say, 1,000 documents, but it's able to, to, to offer the whole collection, which is nearly 9 million uh, documents. I'm talking about our reality. I'm not sure about how many libraries we have in Spain, but I, I will answer it to you. And regarding the founding, this is a very important uh, matter. In fact, uh, I'm very much uh, engaged in financing. Uh, I, I like very much the financial aspect. Uh, in our reality, the public libraries are founded um, governmental. Um, yes, uh, we have experiences in uh, working with companies for a kind of uh, for some specific projects. But the founding is mainly uh, public, uh, governmental. In Barcelona region, I, I would say uh, an average. Um, let's say uh, the regional government is supporting 40% of the expenditure, and uh, the rest is the municipality that is affording uh, this amount. In 2015, we have uh, published a very important, under my opinion, a very important a study of the uh, social and public library, uh, public value of libraries. And we have dimensioned the economical dimension. And we, we have arrived to the conclusion. You, you, I, I, I will send you this, this study, which sure. is very interesting, that every euro invested in libraries, the return is more than double, uh, 2.15. So yes, after, after, yes, after this study, we say it's not a, a, an expenditure, it's a, an investment yes, because what, investment. What, yes. what the administration is, is investing in, in libraries is investment for the future. I mean, for the society we, we want to build. And this is very important. Yes, uh, I write, but I will say to you. Yeah, surely, Dr. Mm -hmm. Esther, truly commendable, truly praiseworthy, and it's indeed an honor and pleasure to hear all this from you. More inspiring, you know, stories coming from you, and yes, practically, you know, you are spearheading, you know, all this development and work in the public library scenario, not only in Spain, but also as being you are being associated with IFLA at a global level. And we really look forward to an opportunity now to having you here in person in India at Delhi and to get more, you know, benefited with you. Thank you so very much for truly an ins inspiring and enlightening and an enriching session yes. by you. And we truly remain grateful to you, Dr. Esther, for your very gracious presence uh, this evening with us. So Excuse with your permission me. now, yeah, thank you very much. And with your permission, and the, after this question answer, we are going to come back to you about your India connections. You have to let everyone knows about it. You know, uh, yes, you yes, are, I wanted to explain my, my, my you know, everlasting connections with India. So we are going to come back and right now is the time to ask yes. uh, attendees, you know, because they would really yes. like to get connected with you and we are with your permission now. We are making the floor open for questions, requesting Perfect. our attendees who are there on this platform right now our own uh, library and information science professional colleagues and many others who are being there connected on this platform. Please raise your digital hand if you may like to get connected. You would definitely be wanting to get connected with Dr. Esther. Please kindly raise your digital hand and we'll really be delighted to connect you with her. Uh, please kindly raise your digital hand and we will give you uh, you know, a connect. This is for Dr. Vinay Kumar Kenthola. Dr. Vinay, uh, I have unmuted you, requesting you to unmute yourself, introduce yourself, and then you can ask the question to Dr. Esther. This is, yes, we are connected, Dr. Vinay. Uh, thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, so I am Dr. Vinay Kumar Kenthola, working with NIT University in Nimrana. So uh, my uh, question is that this is 
reference to the Indian universities and colleges. As per uh, ma'am slide, the library should have space for innovation, etc. So that are these are the extended services in Indian universities. Separate spaces called center of excellence, such as entrepreneur cell, innovation center, etc., are there. So do you think library would be able to do justice if these services or these uh, centers become parts of libraries? Yeah, Dr. Esther, uh, he, uh, Dr. Vinay is wanting to know, you know, I, I would just read out also because he has posted it also in the chat box. Ah, that okay. as per your slide, as per your slide, the library should have space for innovation that are extended yes. services. In Indian University, separate spaces called Center of Excellence, such as Entrepreneur Cell or an Innovation Center already being set up. And he's wanting to know, in your opinion, do you think that the library would be able to do justice if these services becomes part of the libraries? That is, if the libraries becomes a centers for innovation, as you have shown in the slides as a maker spaces, you know, some mm -hmm. of the slides as maker spaces, the public libraries, which is being there. So he's, uh, Dr. Vinay is wanting to know if we make this these innovation centers as a part of the libraries, do you feel that the libraries are in a position to do that? Are we as a professionals? Because here in comes also the upskilling and reskilling and the manpower, you know, educate manpower for this. Yeah. And uh, and he's talking more in terms of a bigger universities, not typically as public libraries, but more as an academic institution, because yeah. already these are a separate entities. And if we think about bringing these innovation centers into the libraries, are we ready enough, you know, to do that work? So that's mm -hmm. what Dr. Vina is wanting to know from you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Uh, our experience is that uh, libraries should work uh, networking with the academic institutionals for, for innovation and also to solve, uh, very much important to solve uh, local uh, challenges. Uh, I give you an example. For example, we work with the university and uh, with scientific regarding um, how how to say uh, citoyen uh, science. For example, to measure the the quality of water of the river. I know that we need uh, scientific. We cannot work alone, but we involve. Uh, library users to those researchers with the uh, with the scientific, so they uh, they are um, participating in in researches and also on on local challenges. Maybe if you are very much interested, I can send you some examples of projects that we are working with the university. Another example would be, for example, that. We work with with another university and in some uh, municipalities where they have uh, monasteries, for example, uh, the the users they take pictures of parts of the monastery and then they uh, digitalize it and they print it in uh, 3D machines with the help of uh, scientific and uh, with these projects. Uh, uh, the users they 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 know the cultural heritage and they they know how to use the 3D printers and how to work with the scientific of the community. Uh, our answer would be that of course uh, we we need to focus on on innovation, but we need to to work together with the institutions. That, and, and for them, it's very important to work with the library users because they need mm, uh, they need to, to to taste their innovations. And normally, uh, with library users, it uh, it functions. I hope I have answered. Yeah. Yes, very much, uh, Dr. Esther. Uh, very very uh, you know pinpointedly you have. Uh, you know, laid the focus on that. Yes, libraries has to now get themselves upscaled, you know, as innovation centers. And they, these works more as a test beds now, as you have rightly said that you have got the users with you who are 
practically the ones you know who are going to work out you know the feasibility how practical are those solutions and libraries That's are true. now you know getting into those new areas and uh, they are very much embracing you know all those new changes thank yes, you very much uh, you know for yes, making for us you, yes, yes just yeah. for you to remember that uh, 40 percent of the citizens have a library card i mean we are the the biggest club uh, in Catalonia, more than football club Barcelona. <laughs> I mean, we are the, the biggest club. Uh, the you may be getting all of them also, all the soccer players also, you would definitely be having them as your members, yeah? Once you have a 40% yeah. of the population as members. Great. That's yeah. wonderful to hear, Dr. Esther. Truly, truly <laughs> wonderful to hear. I would now like to quickly go to our next attendee, Ronet Baba Deka. <laughs> Ronet, you have uh, raise your digital hand quickly would like to request you if you may just kindly unmute yourself introduce yourself and ask a question this is for you ronit ronit baba deka if you're not able to do that i'm compelled to mute you from here and let me now go to our next attendee who may like to ask a question to dr esther and uh, this is i'm requesting sebastian r this is for you mr sebastian r could you please unmute yourself and ask your question this is for you, Mr. Sebastian R. Could you please unmute yourself if you are wanting to ask a question? You have raised your hand. I have sent you a request. If not, let me just quickly, because we are now barging into uh, the time, you know, because Dr. Esther is at her okay. work desk right okay. now, and okay. we are taking okay lot much me. of her time. It's so okay, it's just, okay for me. It's yeah, okay. <laughs> so kind of you. You are pleasure. really, really so kind and gracious, uh, Dr. I'll just quickly, this is the last and final call for all the colleagues who may like to ask any question, please kindly, and I'll just quickly then go to the chat box to see if we have any of the questions posted <laughs> there by our attendees. Uh, this is the last chance for you. And you can certainly can. Dr. Esther, you may like to uh, share your email ID if they have any questions they can they should be because yes. they definitely would like to. Of course, uh, yes. of course. It will be and, a pleasure. Yeah, and if yes. it's uh, regarding other countries, I mean, I can share yes. it with my colleagues in, in the section, in the public library section. That, that would be nice. That are, would be nice. 15 people from abroad, from, from everywhere, and um, uh -huh. uh, with a play, uh, with pleasure. I mean, that's, uh, that's nice, nice. We feel we feel so much honored to be part of this project. For me, it's, it no, was a historical nice. moment. The manifesto update. Mm. It is. It is so. indeed a pleasure. Such a pleasure. I believe you know because everyone is in complete admiration and appreciation of the wonderful presentation conducted by you, Dr. Mm -hmm. Esther. As I could see that you know they are all you know the entire chat box is full of that. Truly remain grateful to you Thank for you. your time and efforts in being there with us. And this has truly strengthened, you know, our uh, resolve to work together. As you have rightly pointed it out, you have, you know, uh, it, it gets echoed, you know, the messages. Yes, we have to work together, you know, for implementation, yeah. working together yeah. for the society, yeah. for the global <laughs> society. And yeah. I can assure you from Delnet that we remain determined, you know, to explore all those, you know, global co collaborations. And we feel so blessed to have the wonderful colleagues like you around who are just being there and you know always always uh it's it's a great honor and pleasure that we have been okay. able to and it, truly it was truly a pleasure to have met you in person and the fly and as i said we look forward now to have an opportunity to welcome you in person to india and uh, we will be truly delighted you know to have your distinguished presence with us you have made this evening a very special evening thank you so very much for thank having you, you, thank you. Uh, on this platform of the late annual lectures and you have truly truly given us the moments to cherish forever we look mm -hmm. forward to our very continued collaborations interactions also to see how we can strengthen the indian and the spanish libraries and their users and can which can lead to you know better knowledge sharing and also uh, to create you know the world that we always wish to see and desire to you know desire to see around so dr esther and now would like to present a memento which we are going to send across through courier so tomorrow itself this is going to come and this uh, uh, I you are going to like it 
I just said oh. it to Oh, thank uh, you so much. Yes. And I look forward to oh. I look forward to oh, have your photograph you. with thank this you. small thank memento you. given with great admiration and gratitude. Oh, thank and what you. What a so wonderful much. person you are. Let me just say that. And it was truly a great blessing to get reconnected. I must thank IFLA for that, you know, at Rotterdam that we have been able to reconnect after decades all together. The admiration this is, is coming, mine. It has this been is coming all the way from India with a lot so much, much of admiration and Thanks great, so great uh, respect for you and lots of love, you know. And this is, you have truly given uh, us, you know, uh, truly a moment to cherish. And mm -hmm. now, before we conclude, you need to tell it to everyone your connections <laughs> with India. Yes. It, 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 it's an honor. It's an honor to, 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 to be here. Really, it's an honor. I'm so proud. Thank you for the invitation. I love India, as I said in the beginning. India is in, in my heart and in my family heart. In fact, uh, I was in uh, India IFLA conference in 92, 1992. I had been, uh, I was married just uh, three months uh, before, and uh, we knew about our family was growing in India. The first uh, pregnancy test was in Delhi, in a, in a Delhi hospital. And after 20 years, we came together, all the family, and we took a picture with Julia in front of the hospital. And now my daughter, Claudia, the second one, we have three. The second one, she's following me. She's now in Korea and she's following, uh, following us. She's now working in an Indian uh, pharmaceutical company, and uh, she says that she has India in heart as well. Oh, so India is in, so in our heart. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank for you this very point. much, Dr. Esther. You, you are very, very special to us, and we really look forward to welcoming you to India. Thank, thank you. you so thank much you so for much. this very enormous, stupendous support, cooperation. And you have really gone out of your way, you know, to make sure that you are there uh, with us this mm -hmm. evening. And we can't really thank you enough for what you have done for us. It's really it's, looking uh, forward. It's me who need to thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you for you, the Dr. opportunity. God thank bless you. you. God bless you. And looking forward to many more opportunities, Good. working together, you know, to transform the libraries bringing in the change in the societies and to contribute to the best of our capacities. Thank you very much. May God Thank bless you, you in Thank all you your indeed. future endeavors. It has been truly a great honor and pleasure. Yes. Thank my, you so my much. Honor. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so and with much. your permission, Dr. Esther, we are going to make this particular presentation available on our YouTube channel. I hope that that is fine with you. Yeah, yes, going it to is. And bef before we finish, I would like to say that anything you need, anything uh, all the attendants uh, need regarding the toolkit, the model, we will be very pleased to, to answer it. And of course, our idea is that all the professionals have access to uh, all these materials, which are incredible. And I'm sure that if now we ask how many people know the public library manifesto, the rate will grow. And I'm very pleased with that. So thank you very much. Thank for you the very much. Thank you. We have thank made you. many more new beginnings and which are definitely, definitely going to work, you know, for the betterment of the society. Thank, thank you, you very much, Dr. Esther. Indeed, thank much you. honored and remain truly grateful to you. Thank you so much indeed. We also would like to thank all our colleagues who have been able to join us from different nooks and parts of the world in our to today's uh, program. And also would like to thank my own colleague, Mr. Kushal Giri Goswami, who has been coordinating our sessions. Once again, a big thank you from each one of us to our very distinguished speaker, Dr. Esther Omela. And we really look forward to having you here now with us in India in person to welcome you. We look forward to that opportunity. And and uh, thank you so much, Dr. Esther. May God bless you. And wishing you in advance a very happy and blessed Easter. It's just around the corner. And wishing and extending all our warm greetings to everyone, to you and all our colleagues over there for a very, very happy and blessed times ahead. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you very thank, thank you. you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Indeed an honor. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thanks. Thank you.
Thank, thank you, you so very much. much once again, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you.